To continue our series on psychometrics and airflow, we're going to talk about the reducing plenum system. Again, this is part six. If you have not viewed parts one through five, I would highly recommend you go back and do so. It's going to be in the same playlist as this one was in because these do build upon each other. Now, if you remember right from the last video, that's part five, we talked about the extended plenum system. The extended plenum system had the same size ductwork, okay, the same square footage, basically, or area of ductwork, all the way down the system, and we lost velocity near the end of the system. Now, the reducing plenum system is a little bit different. Unfortunately, it's not a commonly thing, found thing on residential systems. You're going to find this on the higher quality and higher cost residential systems. You most often find it on sheet metal systems. Um, with duckboard, sometimes it's just a little bit too difficult for duckboard installations. Um, and you're going to find it when the main supply duct has a very long run from the air handler. What happens with the um, reduced plenum system is the cross-sectional area of the main supply duct decreases as you move towards the end of the run. In other words, the area gets smaller. What this does, it forces the air velocity to remain relatively unchanged. Okay, if we decrease the area of the ductwork and maintain our airflow, our velocity is going to be the same. It's a more expensive situation to fabricate than the non-reducing duct system. Let's talk a little bit about why. What happens here is we have our return. Nothing happens here. We have our air handler. But then after every takeoff, we reduce the size using a transition duct section to decrease the area of the ductwork. In other words, decrease the size. When we decrease the area, we're forcing the airflow through a smaller area of duct, okay, which increases the speed. You have three things that go on in a, in a plenum system. You have the quantity, that's the CFM, or how much air is being delivered. You have pressure, which is measured in inches of water column, that tells you what the pressure of the air is in that ductwork. And then you have the speed of the air. How fast is it moving through the ductwork? And there are some requirements for this having to do with health, safety, and comfort, all of these, in order to get a properly running system. So by using the transitional duct sections to decrease the airflow, we're actually maintaining our velocity, even though we have taken quantity off, like here. Okay, so let's go through a couple of these. We have a system that every register has 350 CFM. This is the same system we talked about in part five with the extended plenum system. Our air handler is producing 1400 CFM of air at 700 feet per minute. So my section one here, prior to the takeoff, okay, my first section here, I have 1400 CFM of air at 700 feet per minute. Take off one, I remove 350 CFM of air. So I now have 1050 going to two in this section here. Then we remove the 10, 350 from the 1050. So down here between these two, I have 700 CFM of air being split between these two. Now in the last system, we noticed that the velocity dropped way down here near the end. I think we had 150 feet per minute or something. So let's take a look at this, okay? So coming out of A to B, that's my air handler at point A, my first takeoff at point B, I have 1,400 CFM of air at 750 feet per minute, okay? I remove... 350 CFM of air, I now have 1050 CFM at 700 feet per minute. So again, because I haven't dropped the duct size here yet, okay? Now, we need to take a look at what's happening between points one and two. So that's our two square feet, okay? Now, 
The duct section of B to C is after my first takeoff, before my second takeoff. Okay, it's after the transition. So I have 1050 CFM of air divided by feet per minute gives me my area of 1.5 square feet. So if I go back here, after the transition, this is now a 1.5 square feet area of ductwork. So this was two, we dropped to one. We maintain my 700 feet per minute. Okay, now the next part, okay, we have, we're gonna remove another 350 CFF of air. So what's gonna happen between C and D? Okay, so I have 700 CFM. I need to maintain 700 feet per minute. So we take our area, which is the square foot of duct. To find that, we take the 700 CFM of air. We divide it by 700 feet per minute. And we come up with one because 700 divided by 700 is one. So we now know that this here is one square foot. So we've gone from two to 1.5 to one. Okay, in order to keep the air velocity constant, in this example at 750, 700 feet per minute, the cross sectional of the duct must decrease. So the last section we have, okay, is that going to the last register, I have to have 350 CMF air. So we know that we take our 350 divided by 700, so that last section is 0.5. So you see what's happened here? By decreasing the duct size, we can keep our velocity, that's the speed of the air moving through the ductwork constant. This is extremely important for a proper installation. One of the things you'll notice if you have too little velocity, you'll start seeing dust and dirt buildup in the ductwork. And also you won't feel the, sometimes you won't be able to reach the far corners of the room it's blowing into and the air will feel stagnant. So again, extended plenum, it comes in two different types. You have the standard width, which is all one width. You're gonna lose velocity near the end. The second one is the reducing extended plenum system, which is a little bit more expensive to install, but it does a better job of maintaining the velocity all the way down. And that takes care of the reducing extended plenum system.